Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to talk about two different and interesting engineering samples of Intel Core i9 CPUs. Both of them are for the Intel LJ1200 platform. The first one is an engineering sample of Intel Core i9-10900. This is QTP1. This CPU I have already tested on my channel, but this time I have got a customer to assemble a computer with this QTP1, so I had a chance to do some refreshing tests. The other CPU is an engineering sample of Intel Core i9-11900. So this is an 11 gen CPU which supports PCI Express 4.0. The code name of the CPU is QBYE, which is rather annoying to say, but we have what we have. The QTB1 engineering sample has 10 cores, 20 threads, and it is absolutely locked. There is nothing you can overclock on this CPU. Memory clock multiplier, CPU clock multiplier, cache multiplier, and iGPU multiplier are locked. The best you can do with this CPU is to unlock the power consumption. By the default, the CPU comes with a 65W TDP restriction, and with this restriction, maximum all-core turbo will be about 3.5-3.6 GHz, depends on the motherboard quality and the voltages you supply to the CPU. So, in short, we are getting a 10-core Intel Core i9 CPU with maximum single-core turbo frequency 4.6 GHz, maximum all-core turbo frequency 4.1 GHz, and maximum memory speed of DDR4-2933. The CPU also comes with iGPU, which is Intel UHD 630. Here it is important to mention that I have managed to test this CPU using multiple different motherboards. I have also got some very valuable statistics from my Italian partner Gabriele, who also uses this CPU in his builds, and now I can say that all or at least most of the MSI and ASUS motherboards are working properly fine with QTP1. Many Gigabyte and ASRock motherboards support this CPU, but the single core turbo frequency is 4.1 GHz. That's why, if you're planning to buy QTP1, I would strongly recommend you to buy an MSI motherboard or an ASUS motherboard. For this comparison, I am using ASUS B460M Plus motherboard. Unfortunately, I did not have enough time to test both of the CPUs on the same motherboard, and 11th gens are not working on the B460 motherboards, that's why I had to use another motherboard for my uh, Core i9-11900 engineering sample QBYE. This CPU I have tested using MSI Z590 motherboard, because I wanted to make sure that this CPU can or cannot be overclocked. In case of QVYE, we have exactly the same picture as QDB1. The CPU is fully locked. There is nothing you can do to overclock this CPU. CPU clock multiplier, memory clock multiplier, cache multiplier, and iGPU multiplier are locked. It doesn't matter what bias settings you attempt to apply, nothing of these can be overclocked. Unfortunately, memory clock multiplier is locked at DDR4-2800. It is not possible to bypass this limitation, at least with my motherboard and with my sample. QTB1 supports DDR4-2933, but QBYE works with DDR4-2800 only. I have also tried to use some BCLK for overclocking. It works to go up to 102 MHz, which is very mild overclocking, but it doesn't work if I put the memory clock multiplier to DDR4-2800. So under no circumstances this CPU is willing to work with memory faster than DDR4-2800. This is a shame, but it is what I have got with my CPU and with my motherboard. As I have mentioned before, 11th Gen Core i9 CPUs support PCI Express version 4.0, and this engineering sample QBYE also supports it. 11th Gen CPUs also have got upgraded integrated graphics, in this case we are getting Intel UHD 750 instead of Intel UHD 630. How this GPU is gonna perform, I will talk, I will talk about this iGPU by the end of the video, and of course, all the technical details and all the test results you will be able to find in the slides, which will be available by the end of this video. Right now, let's take a look at a few test results, which I was able to conduct during the short amount of time which I had the QTB1 on my hands. Far Cry New Dawn. Much to my surprise, QBYE, which has slightly lower CPU clock frequency and slightly lower memory speed, is slightly faster than QTB1. 80 and 110 FPS by minimal and averages. QTB1 gives 78 and 108. Both results are significantly lower than Ryzen 5 5600X, which has 83 and 121 FPS. 
What we can see here that Intel 11th gen CPUs have slightly better IPC than Intel 10th gen. In this particular case, Far Cry, which is using only a few CPU cores, is getting benefit from this, and the gaming performance is slightly better, even though QBYE has slightly lower CPU clock frequency and slightly lower memory clock frequency. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is a rather new and optimized game. Here it doesn't matter if you use Ryzen 5 5600X, QTB1 or QBYE. All three CPUs are demonstrating basically identical performance. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, on the other hand, is a rather old and not very much optimized title. Much to my surprise, QBYE is yet again taking the lead over QTB1, 34 and 87 FPS for QBYE and 3279 FPS for QTB1. Ryzen 5 5600X has the best minimal FPS of 37, but the average is slightly lower than QBYE, 81 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion is another pretty optimized DirectX 12 game. Here, QDB1 and QBYE are demonstrating very similar gaming performance. Both of them are slightly losing to Ryzen 5 5600X. Ryzen 5 gives 90 and 116 FPS, while QTB1 and QBYE demonstrate about 80 FPS 1% low and 110 FPS on average. F1 2019 is one of these games where Intel 10th gen CPUs are better than Intel 11th gen CPUs. Here, QTB1 was faster than QBYE, 189 and 259 FPS minimal and averages, compared to 181 and 253 FPS for QBYE. Both of the CPUs lost to Ryzen 5 5600X, which gives 206 and 300 FPS. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Age is another game where 10th gen is better than the 11th gen. QTB1 gives 308 and 448 FPS, minimal and average, while QBYE demonstrates 280 and 403 FPS. Counting the FPS, we can see that the difference is rather big, but if we keep in mind that both of the CPUs are painting more than 250 FPS each second, it's kinda meaningless at this point. Of course, Ryzen 5 5600X was significantly faster than both of these i9s, 421 and 576 FPS minimal and averages. Combining all six games together, we can see that QTB1 and QBYE are providing basically identical gaming performance. In these six games, both of the CPUs are delivering about 125 and 185 FPS minimal and averages, while QTJ1 gives 120 and 173 FPS. Thus, if you are looking for a pure gaming performance, QTJ1 is the best value CPU, especially if you keep in mind that you can pair it with a cheap B365 motherboard. QTB1 is also a great option because you can pair them with the cheap B460 motherboards. QBYE is the most expensive CPU and it also requires a more expensive B560 motherboard, which makes it a significantly less attractive option. Now let's take a look at a few synthetic benchmarks. Cinebench R20. As expected, QTB1, which has two extra cores, is slightly faster when using all CPU cores and slightly slower when using just one CPU core. What's interesting to see that 6-core Ryzen 5 5600X is not that far behind 10-core QTB1 and 8-core QBYE. Ryzen 5 scores about 4,500 points, QTB1 scores about 5,200 points, and QBYE scores about 5,000 points. CPU Z does not use advanced instructions which are available in the modern CPUs, and here the difference between 6-core Ryzen 5 and 8-10-core Core i9s is a bit bigger. Using all CPU cores, Ryzen 5 5600X scores about 5000 points, QDB1, which has 10 cores, scores about 6300 points, and QBYE with 8 cores scores about 5700 points. For this video, I have also done the Blender benchmarks. Unfortunately, I don't have values for QQLS, but the other CPUs are available. In this case, I'm testing BMW and Classroom scenes. Ryzen 5 5600X rendered BMW scene in 3 minutes 38 seconds. QTB1 took only 2 minutes 41 seconds. QBYE, which has 8 cores, stays right in between the QTB1 and Ryzen 5, 3 minutes 6 seconds. For the classroom scene, Ryzen 5 5600X takes 9 minutes and 20 seconds. QTB1 takes 7 minutes 26 seconds. And QBYE is yet again right in the middle of these two CPUs, 8 minutes 30 seconds. LJ1151 Mutant QTJ1 is showing basically identical results to Ryzen 5 5600X. 3 minutes 25 seconds for BMW scene and 9 minutes 27 seconds for the classroom scene. Yet again we can see that QTJ1 is a great value CPU, 
while QBYE is not that great even for the productivity. Finally, let's take a look at the entire system power consumption. I say it in basically every video, but here it comes again. I report entire system power consumption, and for this measurement I am using an external wattmeter. These values do not represent CPU power consumption, but rather entire system power consumption. This means that under gaming conditions with a better CPU, the graphics card will be loaded more, and it will consume more power because it is producing better performance. Let's start with QBYE. This CPU is a big disappointment here. While gaming using F1 2019 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, entire system power consumption goes to 340 Watt. This is even bigger than Xeon EFI 2678 with Turbo Boost Unlock. At the same conditions, system with Ryzen 5 5600X consumes only 308 Watts. System with QTB1 consumes only 305 Watt. Basically, the power consumption between Ryzen 5 and QTB1 system is identical, but Ryzen 5 5600X gives better gaming results. Under Cinebench and Blender BMW scene tests, QBYE system consumes 250 watts. This is significantly more than 185 watt of QTB1. Ryzen 5 5600X is improving this value to just 138 watt. Here we can see that Ryzen 5 5600X is significantly more power efficient than Intel Core i9 CPUs. QTB1 is also a much better option than QBYE if you bother about power consumption. Intel 11th gen CPUs are really power hungry. Talking about the power consumption, it is important to mention that my QTB1 was undervolted by 70 mV. This CPU is capable of going up to minus 80 mV, but because I did not have a chance to do all the tests again in case if something goes unstable, I have decided to decrease the undervolting to just 70 mV to get 100% stable system. My QBYE, which is an 11th gen engineering sample CPU, is unstable if I apply minus 60 mV reduction. Of course, it is kinda unfair to test these CPUs with different undervolting levels, but at the same time these are two different CPUs and we need to test what they are capable of. This particular QTB1 is able to go to minus 70 mV and this particular QBYE is able to go to minus 50 mV. Also, Gabriele from Mir Computers has provided me some statistics and most of his QTB1 CPUs are able to go as low as minus 90 mV. While all of my 11th gen CPUs, which I have tested so far, were not stable at anything lower than minus 50 mV. Recently, I had a chance to assemble quite a few gaming computers with Intel Core i5 10400F and Intel Core i5 11400F. Most of the 10400F CPUs were able to work at minus 60 minus 70 mV, while all of the 11th gen 11400F were not stable with anything lower than minus 50 mV. This indicates that 10th and 11th gen architecture from Intel are not the same and the 10th gen architecture is more tolerant to the voltage reduction compared to the 11th gen architecture, that is why I do believe that this comparison is fair. Nevertheless, I have also done some testing of Core i9 QTB1 with minus 50 mV reduction and even in such configuration its power consumption was less than QBYE. Talking about the 11th gen CPUs, one of the key features of this series is PCI Express 4.0. This CPU supports it and I have tested it with my AMD RX 6800 XT, which is a PCI Express 4.0 graphics card. Additionally, I have tested the M.2 slot on my MSI Z590A Pro motherboard, which is supposed to be functioning only with the 11th gen CPUs, and it was working on my motherboard with my QBYE CPU. Sadly, I do not have PCI Express 4.0 SSD drives, that's why I had to use a PCI Express 3.0 SSD drive, but I have tested configuration of AMD RX 6800 XT in the primary PCI Express X16 slot, plus three PCI Express 3.0 X4 NVMe SSDs in the three M.2 slots. This configuration worked flawlessly, and the CPU is capable of holding all these devices together. Now let's have a few words about integrated graphics, in this case it is Intel UHD 750. On the paper and according to the specification, Intel UHD 750 is supposed to be significantly faster than the previous generation Intel UHD 630. In my case though, the difference between QBYE with the UHD 750 and QTB1 with UHD 630 was not that big. 
Probably the memory limitation of DDR4-2800 of QEYE is a big factor here. Integrated graphics cards are using system memory as the video memory, and here the memory speed and the memory latency is extremely important because large chunks of data are loaded constantly back and forth. DDR4-2800 is obviously pretty slow or I would say very slow for a graphics card. It is also important to mention that I have got some kind of a weird artifacts in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Age while testing with the UHD 750 on my QBYE. I have no clue why these artifacts has happened, maybe it is related to the drivers, maybe it is something else, maybe it is defective CPU or defective motherboard, but all other games I have tested and all other benchmarks I had are passing on the UHD 750 from my QBYE with no issues. It was only Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Edge which was producing these artifacts. I have also tested my QTB1 with the UHD 630 using the same memory and it didn't have any artifacts in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Edge which means it is not a memory problem and uh, probably not the driver's problem, but you never know because UHG750 is kinda new and it might be some kind of a problem with this particular hardware configuration. So far I plan to use uh, these MSI Z590 and QBYE as an upgrade for my uh, personal computer, which is currently running Tinsha X99 D8 with the Intel Xeon E5 2698 V3, so maybe in the future I will be able to report a bit more on the Intel UHD 750 issues if there are any issues. After all, QBYE is an engineering sample and it is possible that there are some defects in the iGPU which is mounted onto the CPU. All in all, I'm rather disappointed with QBYE. First of all, the performance is not any better than QTP1. Yes, single core performance is slightly better, but it is not better enough to be able to justify much higher power consumption in only 8 cores compared to the 10 cores of QTP1. The price is also not attractive at all, and you need to keep in mind that this CPU doesn't work on the cheap B460 motherboards. You need at least a decent B560 motherboard which is able to supply this much power to sustain 4.0 GHz on all CPU cores. With this pricing and with these expensive motherboards, it is better to buy Ryzen 5 5600X, which is also available from AliExpress, for just a bit more than QBYE. Ryzen 5 5600X can also be combined with a much cheaper B550 motherboard with no hiccups such as VRAM or CPU throttling due to heat or power consumption. The only use case for QBYE over Ryzen 5 5600X, in my opinion, is when you need the integrated graphics card. If for some reason you are not able to buy any graphics card, even NVIDIA GT710 is not available for you, then QBYE is probably an option compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. But even in this case, I would probably wait for the G-series of Ryzen 5 5600X to see what this CPU will be capable of and how much it's gonna cost. What I can say for sure is that the integrated graphics will be way much better than Intel UHD 750. For now though, that's probably all I can tell about these two engineering samples. I hope it was helpful, I hope it was interesting, I hope it's gonna help you make your purchasing decision. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye. Mm -hmm.